We all know the big games for next season. What are the most underrated matchups in the 2022 schedule that could have college football playoff implications? The first one I went to is in week one. It's on Labor Day night. It's Clemson at Georgia Tech. Jesse looked at me sideways when I said this. It's not because Georgia Tech's going to compete for a playoff spot, but I am extremely fascinated with aspects of both of these teams. So Clemson, for their part in this, they are expected to bounce back. You know, they are expected to contend for the ACC championship and thus a spot in the college football playoff. We very much are looking at 2021 as hopefully just a blip on the radar screen and it's just a little dip down to 10 wins and then Clemson's right back in the playoff conversation come December. Well, it stands to reason, if we're going to get that kind of product from Clemson this year, it means we've got a lot better offensive production. And if we're getting that from Clemson, this will not be an issue for them. I don't care if it's on the road. I don't care how hostile it is. I don't care that this is a standalone game on Labor Day night. I don't care about any of that. If we got the Clemson we're supposed to have, then they'll handle this with relative ease. I don't know that we're going to have that. Therefore, I think this could be a very intriguing matchup. For Georgia Tech's side in this, they're coming off back-to-back-to-back three-win seasons. It's all on the line this year for them. They know it. The staff knows it. The administration knows it. And they don't have to wait to four or five weeks in the year when they're banged up, potentially, to get their shot. They got their shot in week one, and they got Clemson coming in there. Like I said, it's a standalone game, so for better or for worse, the whole country is watching. I'm not saying it's a do or die in terms of you better win the game, but they almost beat Clemson last year. Don't forget that. A lot of folks almost did or outright did beat Clemson last year. But Georgia Tech was even one of them. So let's see how this one plays out. It could be that it's 27-3 to 3 at halftime. Could be that. Or it could be that it's... Well, judging by last year, 7-3 to three at halftime. Let's keep an eye on it. Next game, week two. I'm giving you one game each week of the first three weeks of the season here. Tennessee is traveling to Pitt. Yes, the University of Tennessee Volunteers are going to play in Heinz Field in week two of the college football season. Colin's already talking about this one. I'm already talking about this one. A lot of folks are already talking about this one. For Tennessee's part in this, this is an opportunity for some revenge because Kenny Pickett and the the Pitt Panthers got them there early in the season last year in Knoxville, so this is a chance for revenge there. But also, this is an opportunity, an early opportunity, for us to kind of find out about Hendon Hooker and about what we think this Tennessee offense could be this year. But it's also a chance on the Pitt side of things to look at what Keaton Slovis is at quarterback. Kind of like the North Carolina thing we talked about earlier. The country knows pretty much one thing about Pitt, and they know that, oh, Kenny Pickett, they lost the quarterback but they don't do their follow-up homework. That's why we're here with 70 graphics for you in mid-April. You need to know that just cause you lose a high profile quarterback doesn't always mean you take 15 knocks down the ladder. Sometimes you've got an adequate replacement. Pitt believes they do. They've got an opportunity in front of, I don't know, at least the region, maybe the world, depending on the TV schedule, how it shakes out in week two against Tennessee. Pitt could knock on the door of playoff contention like we talked about the other night if everything were to fall right on their schedule. But for Tennessee's side of this, if Tennessee's going to be that sleeper that all of a sudden isn't a sleeper anymore in the SEC, they need this one. They need to go on the road and win that game. That would make a lot of noise, I think. The third game is in week three. We hinted at it earlier. This is Penn State at Auburn. Now, on the surface, the marquee says, Big Ten team going on the road in the SEC. And, and not against Vanderbilt, all due respect. This is a, a premier brand in Auburn. So you get all that, you get that good rub. But then you zoom in the microscope a little bit and you realize Auburn's got all sort of issues. Half to most of the folks behind the scenes did not want the guy who's still the head coach there to be the head coach, yet he is still the head coach, even though we don't know who his quarterback's going to be. So there's a lot of question mark all over the Auburn brand, but it's still that AU brand. So you've got that going for you if you're Penn State. And for Penn State's part in this two-part equation, they've got to prove that last year's 7-6 and six record was just a byproduct of bad injury luck. And we're going to find out if that's the case because they beat this team last year with the same quarterback that's going to return this year in Sean Clifford, quarterback for Penn State at least. It's going to be a really good opportunity for them. So those three games at the beginning of the year, if you think about them, none of these teams at least – in my mind's eye, are going to be overwhelming popular picks for the playoff. But this is going to have impact on the playoff picture. Clemson at Georgia Tech week one, Tennessee at Pitt week two, and Penn State at Auburn week three.